as someone who has spent over 15 years in academia, a crusty old veteran of the postdoc treadmill, about three years doing my PhD and then spending some time outside of academia in industry as well, I want to give you the best advice from my wise old bearded face. If you are a new PhD student, here are all the things that you should definitely pay attention to when you are starting. Because when you get to my stage, you're going to look back and go, oh, those were some serious mistakes. Anyway, here they are. I think one thing that PhD students don't do is spend enough time thinking about their topic choice and their supervisor. Now, the supervisor and topic choice go hand in hand, but here's the thing about the topic. A lot of people choose topics that are either too broad or too focused, and there is kind of a sweet spot in the middle. And one thing I like to do is take any research question and expand it up and niche it down just to kind of find where the appropriate question should lie. Another thing I think is really important is that in the science world in particular, there are PhDs that require you to get a certain result. So for example, my PhD was very close to that. I needed a working solar cell from water-based solvents. Now, it had been kind of proven in the past by one paper that was very sort of poorly done, and my job was to ex expand on that. But I had a secret weapon. That secret weapon was analysis, was um, material science. So essentially, I could fail and then analyze the solar cell that failed to say how it failed. I could also do a lot of other stuff that um, sort of like had a variable and I'd measure the change of a variable. And that means that even if my results are rubbish, even if I don't get to the end result, I can still put stuff in a thesis, which is the end goal, to put data, to put facts, to put things, new things in a thesis. And so that was my kind of get out of jail free card. Now, I know some people, particularly doing organic chemistry, that didn't have that luxury. They did a, a reaction in a reaction vessel with various kind of like condensers and pressure vessels and microwaves and all that sort of stuff. And then they needed it to work because if it didn't work, it was essentially, I did this and it didn't work. They couldn't analyze anything afterwards. So you do have to make sure you have a fail plan. Like, if this doesn't go to plan, will I still get a PhD at the end of it? And if it's a hard no, if you need something to definitely work to get a PhD, rethink the topic structure, rethink the, the supervisor, the plan, niche up, niche down, wherever you need to go to make sure you hit that sweet spot. Yes, yeah, spend more time in that stage before launching in to three or four years worth of pain. <laughs> This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I've used, how to make a perfect abstract, the TEDx talk I gave, the podcasts I've been on, and more. It's free content only exclusively on that newsletter list, so go sign up now. One thing I would say to very early stage PhD students is volunteer to speak at any opportunity. Don't wait for great results. Don't wait for things because you have to learn how to weave a story. Part of the modern academic cycle is making sure that you can turn your results into a story that you can present to people, either, you know, just to your group or to a news team or to a journal article or whatever. But just get into the habit of creating a story from what you actually have is a really valuable skill that completely goes unutilized and underdeveloped in early stage PhD students and academics in general. Now, the thing is, is that uh, it's very nerve wracking to get up in front of people and speak, but overcoming that uh, fear will allow you to develop quickly. It will allow you to develop networks. It will allow you to build those storytelling um, kind of skills and nothing is quite like it. Like the only way to get better at talking in front of people is to talk in front of people. There's nothing quite like it. You need to think on your feet. I feel alive when I'm in front of a group of people and I'm like, ah, I need to talk to these people for like an hour or something. Here we go, off I go. You know, like there is nothing quite like it. And overcoming that fear of talking in public very early on will mean that you will 
develop the necessary storytelling skills and develop the networks much earlier on. Lay those foundations. It's scary, but trust me, it will help. Lead the conversation with your supervisor. Now, we have a tendency, I think, as people to not want to hassle anyone, to not want to sort of like knock on their door or like look at, you know, go to them when they're looking busy or they look annoyed. Spoiler alert, academics always are busy and always look annoyed. So just go with it annoy them even more because the squeaky wheel gets the oil in academia and uh, make sure that even if you haven't got sort of like meetings in the near future that you are sending them updated results, even just collecting together a PowerPoint of the results you've collected in the last week, just send it to them, run that conversation, always look to uh, hold meetings as often as you can. I really liked fortnightly meetings because I could plan to do enough work and then get enough data to then put it into a presentation and give it to them. Go check out my other video where I talk about running the perfect supervisor meeting. It's all about chairing that meeting and leading the charge into the conversation. So make sure that you do it, drum, be noisy, but make sure that they have no excuse not to know what you are doing and where you want to go. And uh, look, they do like the research. They always like a talk about the research. It's just that the admin stuff always gets in the way of them um, doing what they really like. So never worry about approaching them with results to talk about it. They, that's what they like. That's what they enjoy doing. They're just annoyed at all the other stuff. Dedicate a lot more time than you think to reading research papers in your field. Now, the thing about being creative in the academic world is that you don't just sit there and have like ideas pushed into your mind by the matrix. Um, you actually have to go out and sort of like lay the foundations of your knowledge so that your brain can do what it does perfectly, which is mold ideas together. Think about how this certain thing you've just read could apply to your research. Um, look at the overlap, find the gray areas, look at the Venn diagrams of all of the information that's out there, find the gaps, like that is what you do and there's no sort of like way for you to come up with them. You've got to kind of take inspiration from the literature that's out there. So read, read and read, do more reading, go and read something right now for at least half an hour a day. You know, it doesn't take much. You can even do it on the toilet. Ah, now if I could go back to PhD Andy, this is the one thing I would tell him. If you are in a data-driven PhD, analyze that data before you forget what you did. Now, what I ended up doing towards the end of my PhD is doing the experiment, collecting the results, and analyzing right away. Even if I was in the lab until like, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Once I was in the lab till like in the morning because I anyway I had to book a machine overnight. It was crazy. But analyze as soon as you get the results. You will not remember everything about your experiment after about two days worth of other work and other distractions. If you have to, write down what you need to know as a cheat sheet and then go do something else. But analyzing your data as you go makes so much more sense than bulking it, than batching it. You know, for a lot of other things like emails, reading, you can batch it all together. No, as soon as you collect that data, analyze it, produce a graph, produce a table, write a little caption about what it is, honestly. It is the hardest thing to do, but it, you'll thank yourself a million times over. There comes a point in every PhD student's career where they feel extreme loneliness. Now, extreme loneliness is a debilitating feeling. It stops you in your, your tracks. It means that you don't feel connected to the outside world. And in a research environment, that connection to the outside world is so very important for networking, collaborations, finding new information, finding inspiration. So you have to come up with mechanisms. Now, hanging out with people, making sure you have a good work-life balance, exercising right, all of those things can be put on a back seat during your PhD, but no, no, no. Make sure that you are looking after yourself, combat that loneliness, make sure you have a social group of friends outside of your PhD, go on meetup.com, go on Facebook groups, go wherever, Eventbrite, find events that interest you in your area, go do those, relax, enjoy yourself a little bit more outside of your PhD, and uh, honestly, you'll feel more creative 
when you're actually doing your work than uh, you will if you just sort of like always hunker down and just focus on your research. We all have stereotypes, socially enforced, our own enforced ideas about what a PhD student should do and act like. Now the thing is, is unfortunately we end up with this hustle mindset, this idea that unless you're in the lab 24-7, unless you're doing work all the time, that you're not doing it properly or that you're not a real PhD student or whatever, just get rid of that. The hustle mindset should die along with the dinosaurs. Like, it is not helpful in a PhD. It is a marathon. You know, don't, don't work really, really hard for two years, only then not to be able to finish because you're completely burnt out. Burnout is a real thing across life in general, and a PhD is no different. No matter what you think you should be doing, no matter what society tells you, no matter what other people in the lab are doing, if they're staying there till midnight plus, they're gonna burn out, I assure you. Make sure you find balance and completely uh, dismiss hustle culture. So there we are, that's what an old crusty PhD graduate would say to a new student. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also, go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I have my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit, as well as my insider forum where we help each other become better academics. All right then, look after yourself and I'll see you in the next video.